everyone. This is Chaitali Bagh from the European Bureau of Aviation and Defense Universe based out of Cyprus. In an era of mantras and clarion calls, the one which is not only important, but also a motivator in the most important production arena, defense manufacturing, is Make in India. The story of which started with the Indian Navy and the French shipbuilders, Naval Group. And today we have with us someone who has seen it all, been a part of the success story of making the Indian Navy formidable and giving India's its still. ADU is privileged to welcome Mr. Somajyoti Basu, Sales Director, Naval Group, in its chat room and is looking forward to listening to the story of Indo-French partnership, which has been a win-win for both the nations. I now hand over to editor ADU Sangeeta Saxena to take this conversation forward. Welcome to both of you. Thank you, Shetali. And most welcome to the show, Soumya Jyoti Basu, our friend for a long time. And also, you know, the actually for very long, uh, he used to be the face for Naval Group here. And whenever, you know, we wanted to meet somebody, it was always Somya there with us. Welcome to the show. It's just wonderful to have you back after a long time. And really looking forward to interacting with you on the new platform and in your new avatar. And uh, Somya, it'll be wonderful to meet you and speak with you. And uh, as we begin, we'd just like to understand from you that it was a story you started. It was a story Naval Group started. We always give credit to Indian Navy for it, but it is the Naval Group which eventually, you know, caught the hands, started a partnership. And then suddenly we realized that we were at par with the world when it came to manufacturing, especially submarines. So looking forward to talking about everything about Naval Group and its association in India with you. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Sangeeta, and thanks, Chaitali, for introducing me. And it has, as Sangeeta says, it's a long, long association, more friendly and human rather than a professional, industrial, and so on. And uh, thanks for inviting me for this chat room. And uh, I'm looking forward to your uh, tricky, interesting questions and answer it as practically as possible. Right, absolutely. And, uh, you know, Mr. Basu, uh, the first thing we'd like to understand from you is that you have been a part of, you know, creating that manufacturing ecosystem for India, in India. And, uh, you know, just trace that story a little bit for our audience. Well, as you know, uh, anything which is dealing with manufacturing ecosystem, uh, needs some establishments and some uh, major pillars, which uh, which becomes the foundation of uh, of uh, those efforts. For me, I would say dedication, good intention, foresight, and investment. These are the four main pillars of uh, such success. And uh, any company, not only Neville Group, I think uh, many other companies have achieved it in defense industry, uh, Indian ones as well. Uh, and I think the the, that that the started from what started with Neville Group was to qualify good industrial companies for P75, and not only we also did the same for P28 Kamorta class uh, gearboxes. These are the contracts. So we started with the contract. We invested in the infrastructure, training, human resources of uh, such um, shortlisted companies, and then we ensured uh, in a very partnering mode to deliver the best in class equipment from these companies uh, with necessary support being brought from France or the European counterparts uh, of our, uh, our ecosystem. So uh, I think we have this ecosystem now in India and we look forward to use the same for similar future projects. And you know, uh, when you were here, uh, when you were here, it was Make in India was the clarion call. Now, you know, over the years, a little change has happened. And with along with Make in India, you also see Atma Nirbhar Bharat. Now, how does the Naval Group fit itself into the Atma Nirbhar Bharat, which is India, is creating for itself? Um, from my point of view, uh, for Naval Group, Make in India to Atma Nirbhar Bharat transition uh, was quite seamless, quite natural. We, 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 
we started building the submarines in India. We created the necessary ecosystem and industrial base to do the same. And now we use the same ecosystem to for capable to do the maintenance of these boats uh, locally. So we bring the necessary uh, adaptive value addition to uh, Indian Navy and we provide the same. And now what does Atmanirbhar Bharat policy mean for me is that Indian industry is already stable and mature enough to provide the after sales of high complex equipment, not only for submarine, it could be for space, it could be for surface ships, but, and then to sustain those industries, to provide uh, more complex uh, equipment for Indian Navy and also for other uh, export potential if possible. And this is what we are doing. We are maintaining relationship and sustaining the competence in these companies to use them for after sales maintenance and also for future projects that we are bidding for, uh, namely uh, modern platforms, uh, modern underwater weapons and sensors, etc. When we talk, Mr. Basu, of uh, you know modern future programs, do we uh, keep in mind you know that today the world and the navies of the world today require a lot of cyber uh, security, a lot of cyber resilience. You also need the state of the art technology. Now, probably over the years since we've been making ships. There are going to be a lot of new things which as and when the you know decade goes along we'll feel that they are they need to be there so how do we plan to you know absorb all these technologies into the already existing technologies you've given to india to upgrade let's say to upgrade the ships which are already there mm -hmm. so you have struck the right chord yeah in fact what you are saying what you is which is forward looking forward looking Important to note in this case is cyber threat is real. Um, and it is real in defense uh, for surface ships, for network centric operations, for intelligence. And uh, India, like many other countries around the world, has the frontline watch, uh, frontline Navy uh, with the real security and ambitions. And thus, um, it will be needed for the Indian platforms, Indian uh, defense technologies to absorb and uh, this, uh, this cyber threat uh, mitigation skills and equipment. So what in Naval Group we have done, we, we, we have invested uh, reasonably since past years in uh, cyber intelligent or digital in, digitally uh, transformed platforms and systems. For example, our Belhara class frigate is an uh, Cyber, uh, cyber secure and digitally smart uh, surface ship. We have also invested in drone technologies. We are unmanned technologies and uh, network centric operations, which is basically intelligent system, electronic sensors, which can make different platforms talk to each other, being controlled from um, headquarter uh, of, of Navy or military to have uh, visibility and to have uh, intelligence all around and to take smart decisions uh, uh, towards the friends or towards enemies as it made uh, as the case may rise so this is what we have worked on and uh, frankly speaking uh, we we are available as you know already we are available to work with the indian industry and uh, drgo um, and other research bodies uh, and institutes should they like to discuss with us uh, on these kind of matters which is future looking but which is which are going to be evident in uh, in naval defense industry, right? And how easy would it be for naval group to uh, you know absorb all this into the already existing fleet we have? Well, modernization of fleet is a natural process for naval group. For four hundred years, we are not only make, designing and making uh, ships, submarines, and underwater weapons, but we are also maintaining it historically for the French Navy, but also for other international navies. So should modern intelligent technologies be required to be imbibed in the existing fleet, it is quite possible. Uh, design studies have to be conducted in close cooperation with the Indian Navy, Indian industry. And it, it, it is something we, we could be looking at in future with the close cooperation with the local industry.
Right. And uh, do you have an existing supply chain management uh, with the Indian private industry? Because you have always done business with the government shipyards. So uh, in that case, did you on the side also develop an ecosystem where you had your supply chain from the smaller Indian industry, which are also there in the defense manufacturing arena? Uh you are right to say that we have done business mainly with the uh, public sector. MDL is a national partner for the P-75 submarine project. And GRST was our customer for the uh, gearboxes. But if you go layer down at the tier one, tier two level, what we have done and what I think we have achieved right now is to create a pool of qualified industries at the tier one, tier two level. And that also includes MSMEs. So going forward, we already have cooperations with GRSE, as you might have seen a few days back, for Govind export projects. And uh, we're also discussing with Larson and Tubro and uh, other big entities, um, uh, subsidiaries of Tata, Mahindra, and uh, VEM for uh, potential possibilities. We discuss uh, with BDL for uh, underwater weapons and sensors. We had partnership with Goa Shipyard. We discuss with HSL, MDL for future LPD. So yeah, it's it's a. If you look at the map, in fact, it was funny. We were we, the map that we often uh, show in our exhibitions on our, you know, on the wall that we program. You will see a varieties of companies all around India, uh, including shipyards, including big industries, including MSMEs and including SMEs, and all this becomes uh, a beautiful collage of industrial uh, ecosystem as uh, you started this interview with, which has sustained naval groups activity in India, but will also sustain and support naval groups activity. But not only, this will be a pillar of strength for the Indian naval defense industry uh, going forward. And uh, along with uh, this sort of a forward march, uh, do we also have plans, uh, when I say do we, I say does a naval group have plans to advance, uh, you know, with other things, other uh, manufacturing units uh, apart from the one it already has in collaboration in India? So do you plan to invest something into the Indian industry and then start up a manufacturing unit with that partnership, which is already there uh, with the government of India has already made, given to all foreign collaborators. So a separate unit where you could, you, uh, we could make, you could be making and manufacturing. Well, Naval Group India, as you know, uh, which the entity which I was part yeah. of uh, is, uh, is, is getting very, very matured uh, in Mumbai and in Karwar. They have uh, really uh, a set of expert pool engineers uh, technicians who can uh, who can do the engineering design activities, but also go forward, go on board, and do activities on board. They are fully backed by the French experts and hotline uh, from France, even uh, from other subcontractors. We are investing in warehouses and workshops, uh, either directly or um, indirectly. Which I mean, we are investing with existing suppliers uh, in additional infrastructure tools to achieve uh, state-of-art manufacturing or state-of-art uh, maintenance operations. I think these are the uh, key uh, elements that we are utilizing to, uh, to, to, to strengthen our position and, uh, in India, um, industrially speaking. Yes, absolutely. But that's, a, that's really wonderful, you know. And keeping in mind the vastness of manufacturing uh, and building a ship, you know, so it's a real good thing to hear these things. You know, it's wonderful. And also to understand one thing that uh, whenever there is, uh, you know, whenever you plan to build a ship for someone, uh, when, for any XYZ Navy, so there's also a contract for maintenance. So uh, does it mean that, you know, that once the ship goes off into the waters, is handed over, then what happens to the post handing over maintenance? Does that also remain your liability or uh, after it's not required after that and the ship goes it, to your shipyard for that? It depends from one country to another, one Navy to another. In French Navy, um, we are used to have uh, what we call in-service support. That means uh, <laughs> we have a contract 
just after this uh, delivery of the ship to the French Navy, we have a classic contract for maintaining uh, the ship and ensuring certain number of days availability at sea for the customer. So the same stands true for uh, navies in the other countries also? Of uh, the customer. Uh, but for India, it is different. Indian Navy is fully capable of operating and maintaining its own ship and fleet. What we do is we bring on the value-added services, adapted solution for, uh, for, this is how we operate in India. So we have a small team in Karwar, which is called Service Support Indian Navy, which is available with the uh, with Indian Navy to provide case-by-case -case basis support and giving, uh, giving uh, confidence. But the main activity, main uh, responsibility is with the Navy and uh, they are fully experienced. You know, Indian Navy is one of the few navies with varieties of ships, submarines, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and a huge history uh, and maturity of operating them. Yes, absolutely. I agree with what you are saying. And, uh, you know, there's one also very important factor, which I always thought, you know, uh, we in the growing world is the development of artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, as an expert in film, uh, in making, uh, you know, we, we have been seeing, you know, all this is very, very filmy. We see that in films, you know, that there is so much of artificial intelligence that the ship actually talks and, you know, so it, things for you. Now, the, are these sort of uh, things going to become reality sometime or the other in shipbuilding? It is already reality, as I was discussing a few minutes back about Belhara frigate. It is a reality, a digitally uh, smart uh, ship intelligence, which is cyber ahead of its time, is already existing in our in our design and fleet. And um, I, I would be very happy to invite you to Olul when you come by next time in France, and you will see this is reality, and uh, these these things are under development at Naval Group for many many uh, uh, years now, and uh, and we are ready to offer them to Indian Navy or any other Navy should it be needed uh, and through uh, through of course the local collaboration and partnership as it may be needed as well right that's it's wonderful to hear such things you know uh, it's like going down the memory lane of scientific fictions and then trying to understand because i think you know over the centuries also naval uh, scientific fiction has been the best of all so you know, know you keep thinking and uh, you start realizing that uh, and France has uh, you know a real history of uh, you know science fiction. So when it comes to the navies, so I think this is really wonderful. And uh, you know when as and when we uh, you know before just before we'd like to uh, you know proceed, we have a very little uh, thing which we wanted to understand, which was that uh, technologies over the world are taking a change. And the need and the requirement for technology in India, for Indian Navy, uh, could be anything, you know, could be absolutely anything which is uh, state of the art. Now, what does Naval Group have in its uh, plan for giving India that state of the art manufacturing, let's say in the next 10 years or so, so that we are at par in 2030, 32, we are at par with the navies of the world. Uh, the there are two ways probably to answer that. First, the priority could be to upgrade the existing fleet, which is uh, which which the Indian industry has made with Naval Group, uh, to modernize them, which is uh, part of the plan, which is something we closely discuss with Indian Navy, and this will be good enough to modernize the fleet to keep them up and running, and not only uh, in the best way possible and in the most modern way possible uh, for its time. And the other way uh, would be, of course new fleets and new uh, weapons that Indian Navy uh, would like to buy, we will always offer them something that uh, we are offering them something that is at par with the present uh, techni technical advance. And that should uh, serve the purpose for the next uh, 20, 30 years as well. Should, of course, uh, we, we, we are the one chosen by the Indian Navy to, for such procurement. Right, that is wonderful. And I really, uh, you know, we can only at this stage in time, uh, it's it's going to be one of those wonderful things to happen to know that, you know, when we in the future, when our, let's say, another generation ahead, when journalists come and interview you, they'll say, oh, we have the best and the state of the art, absolutely, which we've started feeling from now. 
Absolutely. Which the feeling has started coming from now. You know, Absolutely. as uh, our senior generation journalists felt that, uh, you know, it is going to take some time. Now we realize it's all the time is already here. So, you know, we can, it's Absolutely. always going to be hope for the best. And I'm sure it's going to be a wonderful sail ahead for Indian Navy, along with its partnership with uh, not only Naval Group, but also with the Republic of France. You know, France is a nation, India is a nation. We've been great friends, and this is a partnership which really will grow. And uh, from here now, Mr. Basu, we take you back to our studios in Cyprus, where Chatali is waiting for us. So Chatali, over to you. Thank you so much, ma'am. But uh, today, I'm, uh, I think uh, Somia did a very comprehensive uh, thing about Naval Group. Though we all know Naval Group so much, and uh, but this specific interview has comprehend comprehensive outlook of all the all what Naval Group is doing right now. I think uh, we are good enough with this, ma'am. Thank you so much, Somia. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Ali. Thanks a lot. Thanks, and uh, uh, further, we will definitely interact you. with you with uh, more details. Thanks a lot. Have a nice Thank day. You. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a good right. day. Stay safe. Bye. Thank right. You. Thank you so Bye. much, Sonia. Thank, Thank you. you. It's really yeah. wonderful to have you in the show. Right.